The scripture reading this morning is from four different chapters of Exodus, 19, 20, and 22. We have various excerpts from those chapters. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud in order that the people may hear when I speak with you and so trust you ever after. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning as well as a thick cloud on a mountain and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now all of Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. When someone steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, the thief shall pay five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. When someone delivers to a neighbor money or goods for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house, then the thief, if caught, shall pay double. If the thief is not caught, the owner of the house shall be brought before God to determine whether or not the owner had laid hands on the neighbor's goods. When someone borrows an animal from another and it is injured or dies, the owner not being present, full restitu restitution shall be made. If the owner was present, there shall be no restitution. If it was rented, only the rental fee is due. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. <coughs> Please join me in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is our third Sunday reading, or for those of you who aren't reading, traveling through the Bible. We are preaching through the whole Bible this year, book by book, with the hope and the prayer that that will inspire many folks to read their Bible daily, or read their Bible more, or even read the whole thing with us cover to cover. We're still doing our normal stuff too this year. We're picking our guiding star wor words. We'll have a Lenten theme and Lenten resources. We're planning outdoor worship for this summer. But through all this, we'll be traveling through the Bible. <clears throat> and we were snowed out the first Sunday of this project. So I realized that I need to back up and answer the question, why? Why are we reading through the whole Bible? You might be here this morning, and you might be like, I have so much on my plate. I have so much going on in my heart, in my mind, in my relationships, at my job. You know, the state of the world isn't really that great. I want to work out more. I want to gain this skill. I want to focus on this project. Why would I spend time this year reading this ancient book. So I'm going to give you four answers, okay? <clears throat> and the first is, you don't have to. <laughs> we have to be grace-filled and honest around here. This can't be another place full of demands and requirements. So if this is not your season for daily Bible reading, or even weekly Bible reading, that is okay. 
I'm going to make sure, we're all going to make sure that this is still a place you can come and worship and be fully included. And maybe this year will inspire you someday, when it is your season, to read. Because a no can just be a not yet, and we never, we barely ever know which is which, right? The second is though that when we talk about God, we are talking about ultimate reality. We are making claims about the nature of the world. Is the world ultimately good? Is there some higher purpose? What are our duties to ourselves, our community, our neighbors? These are all God claims, because God is just a friendlier way to talk about metaphysics, which is just a fancier way to talk about what matters. And in the words of the great theologian Bob Dylan, you gotta serve somebody or something. So I think taking the time to dive into this ancient book and really interrogate and wrestle and play with and evaluate and dust off our faith, I think it's a good use of our time and will absolutely impact all of those other goals that you have. It might even change them. Third. The third reason is that this is how the Bible is supposed to be read. If we all got here on Sunday, and I read you, out of context, a little snippet of Harry Potter, and I gave a talk about it, that would be delightful for me. But it wouldn't really do justice to the book um, or really help you be the best way for you to understand the message told in that tale, right? Theologian N.T. Wright puts it like this. Imagine if you went to a concert and you got the first ten bars of Beethoven's Fifth. And then the conductor turned around and said, okay, that's all for this week, and back the same time next week, and we'll have the next 10 bars. You would think, wait. And if somebody said, oh, but if you listen to the whole thing, you'll never remember it all, you think, well, that's not the point. You don't listen it, to it in order to remember. You will remember quite a lot of it. You, but you listen to it in order to be swept along in the full flow and sweep and flood of the music. So this is why we are doing this, because it matters, because it empowers you, because it is the best way for us to own and struggle with and examine, and ultimately, I think, grow in our faith and our understanding. And here's number four. Because the Holy Spirit works through this gorgeous and troubling book full of stories about people and God. And here's an example. I have been spending what feels like an extraordinary amount of time this week and in these last couple weeks on church Minutia. And since this is a congregational church, I haven't been alone. Several people in these pews have been right there with me. We're going to hear a lot about it today at an annual meeting. The estimate for the downstairs classroom renovation came in high. It's the season when we figure out the budget. The printer broke. The website is not particularly updated. And people want to talk to me about the bylaws. And so I was so ready. I was so ready this week to curl up with some tea after work and get to spend some time with scripture. The reason I got into this calling, this work, 
and I turn to Exodus. And here we are, right? The beautiful story of freedom and power and accountability and faithfulness as God leads the Israelites out of slavery. And then God becomes a fiery pillar of smoke on the mountaintop, and I and all my Bible nerdery was like, oh, right, we're going to get the Ten Commandments. I remember, I remember this part. Ten Commandments. And then, and then, you guys, I had totally forgotten about the ox scoring and the rental fees. And the cows that fall in ditches and how much you have to pay your neighbor for them? What happens if you loan your neighbor something, your neighbor gives you something, but then your house gets robbed? It is just absolute (laughs) minutia. Siblings in Christ, it is worse than the bylaws. (laughs) God appears in a pillar of fire on a mountaintop and wants to talk about rental fees. (laughs) And then, and then, and yes, I felt personally attacked. God gives the people blueprints. Blueprints. Like down to an inch. You know if you've been trying to read it how detailed these are. They make the blueprints we've been reviewing for the downstairs renovation look like a piece of cake, okay? Because of course God does. Because there is no way to be in holy community without attending to the minutia whether a marriage, a workplace, a church, it is in the care of the details that so much of our ability to love each other gets planned and protected and planted. We worship here this morning because other people attended the estimates and the blueprints and had conversations about drainage. We exist because other people made charters and bylaws and made rules about best practices and what to do when they didn't work. They say the devil is in the details, but here, as God, God the pillar of fire, dictated community rules, about how many cubits the tabernacle should have, we remember that it is God in the details and that God wants to be. There is no dichotomy between the holy set-apart spiritual work and our mundane worldly work. And anyone who has made time for that spiritual work of prayer or daily Bible reading or even had a direct inbreaking of God's presence can tell you it is usually the result of a lot of preparation, a lot of logistics, calendar, reminders, habits, etc. In a world that encourages us to compartment mentalize our faith and reserve it for specific times or places. The second half of the book of Exodus challenges us to recognize God's presence in the ordinary. It invites us to live out our faith not only in the grand set-apart spiritual moments, but also in the seemingly unremarkable details of our lives. And so as we navigate the minutia of our daily routines, let us remember that God is intricately interested 
and invested in every aspect of our existence. A pillar of blazing fire appearing beside you saying, don't forget to get the milk. <laughs> Scrub behind your ears. <laughs> our faith is not meant to be segmented away, but is instead a guiding force that permeates every decision, every interaction, and every thought. In the details of our lives, right there are the fingerprints of the divine. And so today is a day full of church business. We welcome new members, we go to annual meeting, we get updates about our common life, and whether you come to annual meeting or not, this week, I'm willing to bet, is a week full of logistics, minutia, grocery shopping, appointments, emails, things to be done. And God is right there in these details, alongside us, even in those places that we don't expect. As we seek to live out our faith, May we discover God's presence in the ordinary, and may our lives reflect the beauty of a God who encompasses both the grand and the everyday, and cares enough about our everyday lives to come right into them, even the church budget discussion. Praise be to God, and amen. <laughs>